This chapter discusses common problems during the optical cable stripping and splicing. Common problems related to tools used in the cable stripping. There are six main parts. We will start from the first part. The tools and the environment are not properly prepared. The construction personnel do not lay color stripes on the ground during the optical cable rollover operation. As a result, the cable outer sheath can easily be scratched by gravel on the ground. Part 2. Splicing Precautions Poor color discrimination results in wrong sequence of fiber cores. The subsequent construction personnel cannot find the target optical fiber. Poor operation skills. The operator is unable to understand the distribution diagram of fiber core when the splicing machine has a failure. For example, the offset of the fiber is too large or the camera cannot focus. Failure to handle the workload. Delays the progress of work. Common problems of fiber cable stripping. The length of the cable stripping is too long or too short, which does not meet the design requirements. For example, the length required for stripping is 1.2 meters and the actual stripping is 0.6 or 2 meters affecting the splicing operation or operational efficiency. Poor technical skills of construction personnel and not using professional tools. Using a utility knife to peel the optical cable. The optical fiber in the optical cable is damaged or broken due to excessive force. Required cutting depth is not adjusted when using a special tool. Cut the optical fiber or cut the optical fiber too deeply. Common splicing problems Use Miller's pliers to strip the coating of the optical fiber. The optical fibers are cut without being cleaned. The end is not properly cut. The depth of the fiber cutting blade is not adjusted or the fiber coating is not completely stripped, resulting in the fiber not being completely cut off. When the bare fiber is cut using a utility knife, the diameter of the bare fiber does not match the slot size of the cutting tool end of the optical fiber is cut unevenly. If the cutting angle is too large, 
the end of the optical fiber needs to be cut again. The diameter of the bare fiber does not match the slot size of the cutting tool. The optical fiber splicing fails due to a gap in the end of the optical fiber. After the end of the optical fiber is prepared, the face of the fiber comes into contact with other objects or is covered with dust during the splicing operation. Cracks will appear in the end of the optical fiber. The optical fiber needs to be redone, which affects the connection efficiency. Fiber splicing personnel connect fibers using different core and cladding diameter specifications. This will cause excessive losses at the splicing point. This may be caused by different manufacturers, different optical fiber batches, different core and cladding diameters. If the electrode is used for a long time or the discharge position of the splicing machine is not updated for a long time, bubbles may occur during splicing, leading to excessive loss of weld points. If the weld is too short or the end surface is uneven, the weld marks are uneven, leading to excessive loss of at the weld points. Insufficient electrode discharge or excessive fiber gaps may cause the fiber not to splice. Optical fiber is broken when the waterproof cover is opened. After the optical fiber is spliced, the hot melt protection sleeve is not completely inserted into the weld point. The heat fixation does not protect the weld point. After the optical fiber is spliced, the hot metal protective sleeve is not properly placed in the heating furnace or the heating time is insufficient. As a result, the hot melt protection sleeve is not fully shrunk, which cannot protect the splicing point. The pigtails are not placed in the correct position, or the heating time is too long when the hot melt protection sleeve is heated. As a result, the outer protective sleeve of the tail fiber will be deformed the hot melt protection sleeve is twisted and fixed before the heating furnace is placed. The bare fiber is not in the linear state, resulting in excessive loss of the splicing joint. After the hot melt protection sleeve is placed in the heating furnace, it does not shrink successfully. Do not heat for a second time. The closure is not installed properly. 
the construction personnel do not install the closure according to the design drawing. As a result, the acceptance fails. The fastening screws of the connector box are not fully tightened after the construction is complete. The sealing effect of the connector box is not good. The label is not fixed in compliance with the specifications. After the connection of the closure is complete, the installation personnel forgets to hang the fiber cable suspension plate at the entrance hole of the closure. This is all for this chapter. Thank you.